Hi guys, it's Dean from TRS Survival and Fight Fast. As you can see, it's raining outside today, so we thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk about survival in wet conditions. So the, the amount of rain that's out here right now isn't, isn't terrible. I could walk around pretty comfortably, and, but that would be a very foolish thing to do in a survival situation because once your clothing gets wet, it starts pulling the heat out of your body. So if you're you know, presumably in a survival situation, you're gonna be sleeping out in the elements. You might have a tent, but you're still not gonna be that insulated. So bottom line is, if you can stay dry, you wanna stay dry. So. What we want to talk about today is a lot of different ways that you can use a heavy duty trash bag in a survival situation. And it's something that folds up very small inside of a backpack. You won't even know it's there. I've had one in my backpack for several years. In fact, this is that bag. And because they do degrade over the course of a couple of years from UV light, I figured I'd go ahead and, and use this one up and put a fresh one in my bag. So this is a heavy duty three mil uh, trash bag. We carry ceramic and steel ballistic plates, jungle machetes, spy gear like bug detectors and lock picks with the instructional videos to go with, barely legal spring action knives, commando blades, Viking battle axes, and way more. Check out our site right now and I'll even give you 20% off today. Just get to the description link below Click on it and it'll take you directly to our site. And I'll automatically apply the 20% discount at the checkout. It's like a construction crash bag. You wanna make sure you got a heavy duty bag. Otherwise twigs and, and things like that are gonna snag and rip it open. So this is the sealed bottom of the bag. Right now I'm gonna turn this into a rain poncho to keep myself dry. So I've gotta cut a slit in the top for my head and then I'm gonna cut two slits for the arms. My head's still gonna be exposed. Hopefully I've got a hat. As part of my survival plan, I've got some sort of uh, thing to cover my head with. Um, since I'm in the rain, I'm gonna do this pretty quick. First thing I wanna do is put my arm inside this, identify the center. Usually there's a fold. This is the center of the very bottom of the bag. I'm gonna use my TRS fang knife uh, to poke a hole first in the top here in a controlled way. You don't wanna cut yourself, but you also don't wanna slip and cut a huge gash in your bag because you're gonna ruin that bag. And uh, you gotta assume you've only got one. So I've got a little hole poked. Now I'm gonna take the knife. I'm gonna ride my finger up to the tip. And that's so that I, I'm not gonna cut anything that I don't want to. I'm gonna slip this arm in and slip the other arm out. And I'm gonna poke the tip through here. And I'm gonna kinda control the blade like this and slowly slice the head hole here. Hopefully you can see that this so you guys can see this and I'm just gonna slice be careful don't get in too big of a hurry I kind of slit that one a little bit to the side because I wasn't taking my time try and correct that and get back up to the top these bags are pretty thick that's a good thing but it is a little more of a challenge to cut in a controlled even way so I'll come back this other direction Okay, that's probably about enough. I'd rather have it stretch when I put my head in there than to have too much. With the knife still in there, and once again, choke up so you don't poke a hole, you wanna come over to the first armhole. I would locate it just down from the, just down from the corner. Kind of pinch the blade so you know where it's at. Poke that tip through just a little bit. All right, now I've got it started, and I'll try and keep it as even as I can going down the side here. So we've got a nice even armhole. Once again, I'll err on the side of being small. I can always stretch it out. That's probably gonna work. Come back over to the other side. Once again, you wanna be choked up on that blade so you don't poke a big, huge gash in this thing. Feel it with your finger first, then pinch the blade and slowly force it through. Make your slit. There we go. I'll go a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put the knife away and I'm gonna slip this on.
All right, this is a pretty good fit. It's tight around the throat, so I'm not gonna get a lot of water running down in there. Kind of choke up the arms a little bit. So you got your freedom of movement back. I'm gonna open this one up a little bit. And this is gonna make a pretty darn good poncho. It does come down pretty low like a parka too. I'm wearing jeans, not exactly uh, the ideal clothing for a wet environment, but I've got this bag. It's gonna keep me pretty dry all the way down below the knee, depending on how tall you are. So this is a great way to carry something in your bag that basically mimics a waterproof jacket. My arms are still exposed, but we're kind of making the best of a bad situation here. We're assuming this is a survival situation. Ideally, you'd bring a waterproof jacket, but in this case, we didn't have one, or maybe somebody else in your group needed one. Uh, maybe it got ripped, whatever. A lot of bad things can happen. This is a good next option. It's also pretty big in the back. You could easily slide this over a backpack, and now all of your equipment, even if you didn't have a great waterproof backpack, all your equipment is now dry. So this is a, a great item to have. We're gonna show a couple more uses, um, but for the poncho, this is basically it. It's done. You, if you have a big group of people, you can carry three or four of these and you still wouldn't really notice the difference. One last thing with the ponchos. If you get a heavy duty poncho, they're typically fairly thick and they're also fairly heavy and they only serve one purpose as a poncho. Uh, when you carry a trash bag like this, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. So if you're trying to make your survival kit as small as possible, there, there may be some advantages over bringing a trash bag over an actual rain poncho. Now that's for the heavy duty rain ponchos. There's nothing better than a heavy duty rain poncho if there's heavy rains. Uh, now the lighter, thinner ones that you see people wearing at sporting games and things like that, if you've ever used one of those, you know how cheap they are. You walk by one thing, you're gonna snag it, it's gonna rip a huge hole in it, or I've even seen people while they're putting them on, the seams on those things are melted so, it's just cheap plastic, and while they're putting the thing on, it just totally rips open. So I wouldn't rely on those as, this is what's gonna keep me dry in the rain. You want something thick, this can stretch, it's tough, it's not gonna easily rip, and it's just, it, it's a great option, and it's also very versatile. We're gonna show you some of the other things you can do with it in just a minute.